it is uh, 1135. Uh, it is my hope that uh, Chris will be able to join us. I know that Debbie is working with her to get the technology updated. Uh, so uh, according to uh, what I'm able to uh, see on one of the <laughs> for computer screens is that we do have a wonderful quorum and it will hopefully be joined uh, by Chris soon. Uh, so at this time, if you would like to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, then um, moving on to uh, 1.3, uh, public comments. Uh, we do not have anyone here uh, for the public comments. So I'm moving on to 1.4. Would someone like to make a motion to approve our minutes of September 24th, 2020? And if, wanna, this is Mary Lynn, I'll move. All right. This is Meg, I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Right. Great. Wonderful. Uh, thank you. Um, as I had stated uh, at the beginning, uh, we are truly just here for a special session to um, have an opportunity to talk about our 2021 uh, budget in light of the fact that the city is planning to uh, pass their city budget uh, uh, in, in the next few weeks. And so uh, I would like to kind of um, talk through um, where we are at this point with our budget and, uh, and some narrative. And uh, I would like to preface it with the fact that I feel like um, uh, Garrett Erickson and I have some, uh, you know, some some positive news to share, which is always, you know, a delight to do when you're calling a special session. Uh, usually, those are not for, you know, uh, positive updates. So, um, what I'd like to share with you right now is uh, thank you uh, truly for arranging your schedules to be part of this special session. Um, at this meeting, it is really necessary for us to to approve a final library budget. Uh, prior to the Common Council approving their full city uh, fiscal budget. And to just give you a little bit of a narrative so that you have a greater understanding of where we are uh, right now, uh, as you're aware, you know, if you can think back, <laughs> on uh, July 23rd of this year, we submitted our original uh, library budget proposal, proposal number one. And then uh, uh, more recently, uh, the city then shared sort of a revised library budget in which there was a uh, financial difference of about $182,000. And uh, you know, that then uh, uh, resulted in um, me uh, reaching out to city administrator Todd Wolf and suggesting that he and his, the assistant city administrator uh, meet with Garrett Erickson and myself to sort of talk through uh, the budgets and just have an opportunity to have some sort of understanding because you know numbers are one thing, but when you actually have conversation about numbers, you end up having a greater understanding for why certain decisions are made um, or not made. And I would like to say, that it was a really um, positive and productive meeting. And you know, with everything going on, we managed to squeeze this in, I believe about 24 hours ago, <laughs> less than 24 hours ago. And um, it, it really gave us an opportunity to share with our new city administrator uh, sort of the uh, history of library budgets over the years. And I know that some of you have been on this journey with me these last 10 years, not all of you. Some of you are relatively new. And so one of the uh, key highlights, or some of the key highlights that I wanted to share with you that I, I think our Todd Wolf also felt was uh, very helpful is that uh, it, our library is actually funded less in 2020 than in 1996. 
So in 1996, our budget was $2,444,665. And in 2020, the budget was going to be 2423314 And I think it's really important, you know, for common council members, especially if they are new, board of trustee members when they're new, to really have an understanding of how budgets have been um, put together by our city for the various departments. And a key part of that uh, amount uh, of that history of budgets is there, were, there was a five year period in which the library was frozen at the same flat rate for five years. We were the only city department that uh, was uh, treated in that fashion for the fiscal uh, budgets of our city. And it was an opportunity during this uh, great conversation that we had yesterday uh, for, for Garrett Erickson to really uh, share some key components of how our library has really um, became, become more efficient and has really been sort of the leader in ver a variety of practices of how to manage as well as how to develop new table of organizations as well as utilize various uh, technologies just to become more efficient with library services. And I know that all of you know that, but it was just good to point out that back in 1996, we did have 59.35 full-time equivalents of employees. And in 2020, we are at 38.75. And what was really um, wonderful about the conversation that we had with um, uh, Todd Wolf and his ass assistant, Carrie, yeah. Yeah, uh, is just them really having a, a greater scope of our history and what things have been done to demonstrate that we are being very responsible with uh, taxpayer dollars. And uh, we also were able to show at what point did the Mead Public Library actually join uh, the city salary scale and uh, what, at what point did we join the city insurance. So, you know, a good portion was just on history, which I think really gave a wonderful foundation of knowledge of where we are today. And the, the budget that we had you know, proposed last year uh, resulted in us receiving 1% less than, I think it was transit and the library that received 1% less. And all of you remember, we had to then figure out how we were going to cover that and that resulted us in us not being able to um, hire a staff person after, uh, that we felt was necessary for our uh, services. Um, so that, that was just sort of the history part. And in the conversations and having greater understanding of what the city is going through, I and mean, we are all aware that we are in the middle of a pandemic. Municipalities are struggling everywhere. And in having this conversation with Todd and you know, me trying to really put forth um, the needs of the library and, and, and how we best can achieve our mission and how does that balance with the city having a $114 million budget and how monies can be you know, shared uh, throughout the city to the different departments so they can achieve what they need to do to provide services for citizens. Um, the conversation was very positive and I'm uh, you know, really um, sort of uh, pleased that um, as a result of that conversation, uh, Todd was just like, it's so good to have this information and we, we now have an, under, we have an understanding of what you feel that you need for the city, but you need to understand that the city is really struggling with finances and you know, we're just not too sure how we can really meet what you are you know, asking for. After the conversation, it, it, uh, and this is all within the last 24 hours, it's my understanding that uh, that Todd and his team went back and they really looked at the um, overall city budget and they were able to find um, uh, a little bit more money to be able to help us with our city budget. So even though we had sent initially our proposed budget to you, which was back in July, and then we sent you the new updated budget that the city proposed that we consider Today, at this meeting, we now have a third uh, proposal, and that is the one that is on board docs for you uh, right now. And um, in looking at that, uh, 
third budget, and I don't know if some of you are trying to scroll and trying to <laughs> open it up on board docs, but um, I think maybe it would be helpful if, Garrett, if you just want to just uh, maybe share uh, what this third budget proposal option is, and it's the one that Garrett and I have talked with that we think is, is a good one for our library board to consider today. Oh, and I have to, sorry about this, I have to try to turn his microphone on and trying to see which older person he is. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Maeve. Um, so as Maeve said, uh, the updated budget's lower than what we had, had asked for, and we um, assume that. But like every organization, we have costs going up, whether that's uh, you know inflationary costs for supplies and books and so on, as well as um, costs for personnel. And uh, so the city uh, did give us the 2% um, to increase wages. The other thing that's going on this year that's really unique for us at the library is we have several staff who are planning to go on to the city's health care plan. And that uh, is money that goes is budgeted at the department level. And so that really hits us when we um, have people that go on to the plan that weren't on it before. And so um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but as I recall, I think there were five people that were currently projecting to go on to the health care um, plan at the city. And I believe, what was it, Maybe There was two I, family, it, it, two I, single, and one spouse and right. employee. So five people, and that's a significant amount. As I recall, the family plans were closer to 30000 each. And so our health care costs are really um, what is driving up our costs significantly. And so um, as we scroll through, I don't know that we need to go line by line through this, but um, just to say that um, in this latest budget, there is a, a proposed increase of $75,999. Um, and that will primarily go towards wages. And then um, as uh, if you go further into the document, it, there's, a, there's a line in healthcare that um, is in the public services team. If you know that our, our budget document is, is organized by our teams, our three teams, administration, public services, and support services. It's the public services team that added some new staff um, that are taking on the healthcare. So they have a, one of the line items in there is a significant increase in healthcare costs. And so um, those are uh, some of the areas that we're struggling a bit with that we won't have covered. And so that's where the discussion today for the board is in whether uh, we want to look at some sort of a, just running a, a deficit budget this year or whether we wanted to run a, an actual um, come within uh, the parameters and try and make it and uh, equalize it out. So. I guess I'll open it up if there's questions at this point. And, and before we take questions, so the, the third budget proposal, the amount that our total uh, budget would be would actually be uh, $2,499,313. So that, you know, is, uh, it, it, it's definitely, you know, it, it's a bit more than what we had in 2020. Uh, it is not, you know, what we had hoped for, but uh, with Garrett Erickson and um, Debbie uh, Do you have a uh, right? <laughs> um, working together, they think that they can um, make this uh, budget, you know, work for the library with this additional, um, uh, with this addition that uh, Todd Wolf shared with us this morning uh, he and his team worked last night and this morning shared the information that they would be, they were able to find some additional uh, monies. So um, I, I know it's always challenging to talk about budgets. It's even more challenging when you're trying to do it <laughs> in Zoom. Um, but at this time, does anyone have any question or um, comment? Uh, yeah, Mary Lynn Donahue. I just wanted to make sure that I am looking at the right document, which is 2021 MPL budget option three. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And we only had two attachments, right? I believe that's where we're at, yes. All right. 
Just looking over okay, there. Which is good. I, I'm not questioning that, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure I understood that it was option three that were. Yes, that yes. Were, and so I know the document we were debating on how to propose this, but so the first, no, the, the one that says budget proposal number one was the original ask that you guys approved earlier this summer. Um, proposal number two was after we had met with uh, city administration and we were uh, simply looking at, I believe, uh, let's see, at that point, there was different numbers. So um, they had actually just had the proposal, the 2% increase. And um, I'm trying to remember what else was in that one. We debated pulling that one down because it's confusing. Right. So, but really what we're looking at, Mary Lynn, is number three is where we're at right now. So this is sort of a timeline okay. during this budgetary process. Right. And, and budget proposal number, uh, uh, three sort of includes the amount that um, was shared, I believe, at the uh, city finance and council uh, meeting um, without the uh, additional uh, increase, I believe. So we've tried to make, this is just budget proposal number three that we are considering at this point. We were actually working on this document uh, within the last hour trying to just get the <laughs> latest updates because this has really been changing as we talk to Todd and his team. So if, if it would and be helpful. Yes. Nate, yeah. I noticed on there, I forgot to change that 260,000 on the comments. That should only be 26,064 in the comments. Where are Under you, Debbie? Account, that would be account number account number two five 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 one five zero five one zero three forty. That's the health insurance that was on with each supervisor. Right. So that's that on only be twenty six. Oh. Yeah, it's just a a posting error that we did with us rushing to get it out. Thank you for that. That's where yeah. my question was. Yeah, yeah, it was 26. <laughs> Sorry, and I'll reissue that to the board so you've got a correct copy. Right. And I think, you know, one of the challenges that um, the city has, and it's not alone, all the municipalities are having challenges with this, is the rising cost of health care. And what is uh, challenging this year for the city of Sheboygan is that if there's an increase in health care in your department or in the library, um, it, is, it, it, is, it is being asked by departments in the library to, to try to fund those uh, new health care costs. And so, um, you know, th th that is why we're sort of showing that, that for our five uh, additional staff going in, on insurance, that, that cost level is 91,716. And uh, so it, when I was talking to Garrett about, you know, best case scenario for our library and what do we hope to accomplish today, um, it, it essentially um, is that we uh, consider moving approval of this budget. And I sort of made out a motion that, and that specifies that, that due to the work of our city administrator <laughs> last night and early this morning, finding additional money that, uh, you know, that the city is giving us an additional of $75,999 over what we received in 2020 fiscal year budget. Uh, and that would mean that if we were to adopt that, that we would, um, our budget would go forward with just having a, we would be running it with a small deficit due to the additional healthcare cost. Um, and you know, if it's helpful at this point, I can make that motion. I'll read it better than I just tried to explain it. And if someone would like to second it, then we can have further discussion to see if this is where we want to go. So I'm just wondering, does that make sense at this point? Uh, and just so you know, for those, uh, Kathy Norman uh, was able to join us and she's at a computer screen, I don't know, at least 18 feet away from me. Um, so we have another uh, board member. So. Um, so at this point, I will just go ahead and make that motion, and then we can continue to have questions and comments about uh, where we are with this budget. Uh, so I move approval to approve the third budget proposal from the city in the amount of $2,499,313, which includes the $75,999 increase over the 2020 fiscal year budget, which will leave the library with a small deficit due to the additional health care costs. 
Would someone like to make a, mo a second <laughs> for that um, okay. motion? Okay. And can you just uh, so can you just clar uh, clarify Chris. who it was that seconded for our minutes? So Chris. Chris. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so at this time, are there any uh, questions or um, comments? I have a question. Maeve, Maeve, who moved it? Maeve did. Uh, I did. I said I moved. It's hard to hear with my mask on. I'm yeah. sorry. I moved. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Okay. And then Kathy Norman just has a question. a question. So, oh, and you know what? I need to turn on Kathy's microphone. Who are you, Kathy? Who? Okay. <laughs> Did your yeah? So my question is, what is our plan? Can you can you turn your mic microphone down towards you? There you go. Does Thank you. So what is our plan for meeting this deficit if these healthcare costs turn out the way they're feared to? Is this we're going to need to cut costs as the year goes on, like we do every year, and okay. and if we at the end of the year have a deficit, we'd have to tap into reserves. So reserves are our. Plan. It is yeah. yes. That's okay pretty much where we're at. Okay. I think, Any, I think Chris had a question as well, mm -hmm. maybe. Right. So did someone have a question? Yeah, I had a question similar to Kathy's. Okay. If our deficit was going to continue to grow with the increase of cost of medical care, but you already answered it. Yes, and I think, you know, this is going to become a bigger issue across the city. We have a lot of people retiring. And, uh, and the healthcare costs are continuing to go up. And so I don't know what the answer to it is, but it's certainly not just a library or our department's issue. It's really gonna become a city issue. Mm. And, and we were told um, at our meeting yesterday with Todd that um, the, you know, he is gonna be working very closely with our uh, HR department. As you're well aware, Vicki Schneider is the new uh, head of the HR department. And I know that in this coming year, uh, there is going to be more um, time spent on researching the healthcare and seeing, you know, which options are really the best for our uh, city employees. So uh, it is not just our library that is struggling with this. As I said earlier, it's, it's every department, it's everybody in, in this building, City Hall. Uh, I think we all recognize that that is a, a challenging expenditure and uh, going forward, looking to see if there's some other solutions that we can all embrace. Okay, oh, looks, uh, Mary Lynn Donahue. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I did want to let the board know, and, and you may already know, but um, because our health care reserve fund is, is quite healthy, uh, the proposed budget will reinstitute the city contribution to uh, HSA accounts for employees. So um, we think that's a, a pretty positive thing. I just would speak in favor of this. Um, I think it redresses to some extent the inequities that the library has endured in uh, previous budget processes. Um, it provides some equity so that year over year, um, our increases are not coming on the basis of a negative position. It's not totally positive, but um, it also avoids a huge fight. Um, and um, I think this 3.1% increase is, is fabulous. And I think, uh, uh, frankly, Garrett and Maeve, through their incredible hard work, are responsible for it. So I'm fully in support. Okay. Any other uh, questions and comments? Another uh, uh, point I would like to make that it was uh, uh, the conversation that Garrett Erickson and I had with our, our city administrator and with the assistant city administrator. Um, it was really um, informative of, of getting good information from, you know, from their perspective as well as our perspective. And there was real interest in wanting to learn more and have greater understanding. It even resulted in uh, the fact that we felt it was such worthy of all of our time that we are planning to meet quarterly to really talk through the budget and talk about what things are coming up so that I think all of us can be, be uh, more aware of how 
uh, budgets are impacting our various uh, departments you know, throughout the year. And so that when we are getting to the point of the fall, when we're deciding next year's budget, everyone has more information of what went into the decision making of why certain things are prioritized in various budgets. And I think it will help um, our city administrator to uh, just add more knowledge to the overall global view that he needs to have on all of our departments. So as I said, it was very positive and the mere fact that our um, conversations resulted in additional work to try to find some additional monies really demonstrates to me good faith effort in trying to uh, help us get the monies that we need in order to fulfill our mission at the library. So I, I thank uh, Todd Wolf very much for uh, working uh, closely with us uh, in trying to present yet another budget to all of you. <laughs> so um, any other comments or questions? Uh, and I'm just looking for the, uh, it looks like uh, I'm not getting anyone waving or <laughs> hand. Um, uh, at this time, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And uh, uh, again, thank you for uh, being part of this meeting. Uh, we, we now can uh, go on to a much well, I would like to say it's a much lighter topic, but you know, I, I was telling poor Garrett, I said, you know, I think in light of where we are, I think we're gonna always have COVID-19 service responses on our agenda. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, I am now gonna turn it over to Garrett and I told you this meeting was a positive one and then I'm really not too sure what he's sharing on the 2.2. <laughs> so let's hear what he has to say. Actually, these are <laughs> fairly positive for such a bad topic, but um, as far as uh, quarantine of materials go, so when we first started off in the spring, we weren't sure how the virus was actually transmitted. We were thinking it was more surface uh, transmitted rather than air transmitted. And so we had put uh, quarantine the first uh, when this first came out at 72 hours, and then we ended up moving it to four days. Um, obviously that puts a little bit of stress on our materials that we have to store them. Um, we're storing them in the basement. And then also uh, people have been somewhat upset sometimes because they get notifications. We've struggled with the notification piece on uh, when we quarantine it because we don't touch it right away. It's, it's set downstairs. And then uh, sometimes people reach that, uh, they get a notification that, you know, your stuff has uh, not been turned in yet when it actually has. So the good news is the DPI just put out a new, uh, some new guidelines. They sent it out to the system directors who sent it out to all of us on September 30th, saying they have now changed the guidelines based on science from uh, the CDC. And our stuff is now being, all of our materials are now being quarantined just for a day. And so they go downstairs for one day and then they're back up. And so that, that will help with our circulation numbers as well as some of these uh, issues that we've had with certain patrons being notified um, that their stuff has not been turned in and so on. So I think that's a really good thing for us, a nice development. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to mention briefly was that um, the with the Congress passing the CARES Act this summer, earlier this summer there was quite a bit of, uh, uh, of the grant was available for municipalities to use to uh, pay for certain equipment that was designated be because of the virus. And so uh, just a couple things that we've done with that. Uh, we have purchased two Hallison uh, foggers and they're sort of like, they look like almost like a garbage can shape, um, kind of a rectangle shape, but basically they spray like if you think of uh, kids that are sick, you put a vaporizer in their room, it's sort of like that very fine spray. And what it does is it, it sprays a whole room with uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is 99.9% .9 uh, effective in killing these viruses, including uh, COVID. And so we are using that now. Uh, we just received that a, a week or two ago, and we've started to use it. It's a very simple way to, to basically fog a whole room and clean it up. And so, and it can even be used, the mist is so fine that you can use it in an office space or with computers and so on. So um, we are using that now. We've started off with our restrooms and stuff, but it'll really save us some time as opposed to hand cleaning everything. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, the other kind of a high, ex more of an expensive uh, 
purchase was the uh, we're getting new office furniture, which the board approved a while back. Now uh, what we've added to that is uh, glass shields in between the cubicles. And so that can help us with uh, transmission of stuff through the air. And so that was about $14,000 and the foggers were approximately 28,000. So we were able to put that back uh, as, as to get reimbursed through this federal CARES money. And so that's uh, effective safety equipment that we didn't have to pay for. So that's pretty exciting for us. So, but we're, we think we're doing a better job of cleaning and keeping staff safe, I guess, is the bottom line. Right. So, yeah, that's what I have to report today. We do have a meeting next week again, so. Right. And I think all of you are aware that uh, just looking at our Sheboygan County Public Health Department numbers that uh, Sheboygan County is sort of struggling with the increase in rise of uh, positive cases uh, in our surrounding area in addition to uh, the prison population. So uh, I just hope that all of you uh, continue to be healthy and safe and uh, I'm hoping that we can all sort of work together to slow down this curve and uh, just keep our community safe during this pandemic. If I may jump in there too, and so yep. Todd Wolf and I did have some discussions about that. We're hoping that um, if it gets a lot worse and we have to close down or to go back to a phase that um, the library and the city would announce at the same time since they are joined um, mm -hmm. rather than having us go first, you know, and Mm -hmm. So that is the thought that he agrees we should do this uh, together. Mm -hmm. And really we're, we're just, in a, just again, we're keyed in on those hospitalization numbers. The capacity of the hospital is really the key metric that we're watching. Right. So, and so far that's been fairly stable. It's been around 10, 11, 12 most days. Right. Uh, any other questions or comments about the uh, COVID uh, responses from our library? Well, I uh, Kathy Norman. Um, yeah, so I've heard in the community, Garrett, just about a couple bad encounters at the library. And last time you shared that um, your staff was taking some heat trying to impo impose the face re the mask requirement. Has that gotten any better? Because I keep thinking about it and feeling like I want to protect library employees from having to bear the brunt of, you know, people getting really nasty. Um, it's not changed that much. I mean, it's day to day. Every day is different, mm -hmm. and, but some days we do struggle with certain people. And uh, you know, we have people that test it. And I think the real problem is, is there's just a lack of consistency across the community and what organizations enforce versus don't. Mm -hmm. And then I think if you know, my own take is that if people get used to organizations that don't enforce, and then they come to ours, and then we do, then it makes us look like bad guys. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we're really trying to do it just to keep people safe, uh, staff and public. And so, I mean, we think we're doing the right thing, but some people do get pretty heated over it. We, we are still getting uh, people who are uh, very grateful that we're providing free masks, because not all organizations and businesses are able to do that. And so uh, the, the wonderful organization, who are they that are helping us? Uh, the Sheboygan Mask Makers. So, so talk about a, a wonderful organization that did not exist in 2019. Uh, this is a new one and it's really made such a positive uh, uh, contribution to our community because uh, people are enjoying their creative endeavors. I've never seen so many different fabrics used as uh, mask uh, material and uh, our, our citizens are greatly appreciative of those donations. Anything else from anybody? Well, um, our next meeting will be, oh, you know, next week. <laughs> so so uh, we will see all of you uh, next Thursday on the 22nd at 3 p.m. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to Oh, love it. All of three of you. Uh, one of you can be a second. <laughs> oh, maybe Marcos will be second. <laughs> He just popped up. So <laughs> um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And aye. aye. Any opposed? Uh, thank you all for joining us today and uh, may you continue to be healthy and safe.